Hey there, did you miss me? Hey, it's Smitty here from Kevin's Solar Adventure. I've been dying to do a video on space heaters. Um, I've been on the boat, oh, this is my third winter coming up here, and uh, I've used space heaters quite a bit. Um, and it's, you know, there's, there's, some, there's some ways to make yourself warm easily without, uh, without heating up the entire boat. Um, but I've been dying to do this for a while. And it's just been too doggone hot outside. But now that it's, you know, now that it's September, October almost, um, it's cooling off a bit. So I, I've done, uh, basically uh, gotten all of my space heaters together. And I've, I keep accumulating space heaters. I buy them when I think they look cool and I'll use them in different spots. But I keep them stored away in, in the summertime and pull the fans out for the summer and then use the heaters in the winter. Um, so I wanted to do a video on how these things work with my blue eddy ev240 having the thousand watt inverter doesn't help because some space heaters will draw quite a bit and basically it's not a very efficient way to stay heated uh, because uh, the high draw on a space heater pulls the battery down quick so um uh, some of the things i'll show you here will give you an idea of what space heaters would work maybe a little better with the blue eddy uh, what settings to use with them. It's not complicated once you get the basics of it. My thing is with the EB240 is has always been to scale down my appliances. So I have smaller draw appliances. Uh, they may not be as efficient, but they still work and function without tripping the Blue Eddy. Now, if you've got an AC200 coming, uh, clearly you can use uh, the, the higher powered space heaters but uh, you're going to still draw your battery down quick because uh, there's not enough to, to, to run a space heater all night on high. Anyways, uh, watch some of these and uh, maybe you'll find an idea for what you need on your RV or boat or in your home. And uh, hope you enjoy the video. Okay, this is the Intertech. This was rated at, on the label, 1500 watts. Let's go ahead and turn the fan on and the AC. That'll help. The fan draw drew about 17 watts when I ran it earlier, so it's it's under 30, so it's not going to show up there. Um, <clears throat> through the kilowatt meter, this thing drew about 1,257 uh, watts. Let's see what it does. Blue Eddy. So this is low heat, and right now it's at 1,090. So this is probably not going to run for more than two minutes without shutting off. Um, I'm just giving you the example and just showing it. You know, we, we knew it would do that because it's rated at 1500 watts. Um, if I put it on high, it's gonna it's gonna give me an error message. Right now it's a uh, it's 1080, and it would shut off within two minutes. So I'm not going to show the whole two minutes. We'll go ahead and let you know that this one basically won't run with the Blue Eddy. Um, for more than two minutes. So uh, let's look at some other ones. Okay, this is the Holmes Twin Ceramic heater. Um, the label's rating it at 1500 watts. Um, there's no fan, basically, it's just a heater. So um, I've got it on high here. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Uh, right now it's ramping up slowly which is actually a good thing um, since you're not getting that initial burst uh, of, of, of a spike you're not gonna you're not gonna throw off your inverter if it happens to trip um, so it's slowly ramping up when I did uh, when I plugged this into shore power and used the uh, the kilowatt meter it topped out at about 593 watts on low it took about uh, two or three minutes to get there, actually. So the ramping up is a good thing, I think. It it still puts out heat, but it slowly uh, uh, heats those elements. So it's not an initial spike. Right now it's at 339. Let's get it up. Uh, let's help see if it gets up to 593 here or in that area. Okay, with the, the Holmes Twin Ceramic Heater, it seems to have topped out at a draw of 400 and almost 10 watts so um, there's that that's on the low setting let's turn it to the high setting and see what it ramps up to it's quickly going up 750 770 800 
Uh, this heater is rated at 5, uh, let's see, 1500 watts. So basically, uh, we should see something around that. Um, right now, it's still at 970. These ratings can can really not be as completely accurate. I've seen things that are higher than rated and lower than rated depending on the unit. Right now we're at a thousand watts draw. To be honest with you, with the EB240, if you kept it at this setting right here, it would only last about two hours and before your battery would be dead on, on the EB240. Uh, uh, um, even though this is a 2400 watt rated uh, uh, amp, uh, watt hour battery, it only gives you efficiently about 2000 watts. Um, so at 1000 watts, and your heater on high, this thing would last only about two hours and you'd be out of power. The best thing is to do is to find the lowest power heater you can find, run it on low, and keep yourself alive in a cold space if you have the power go out. Uh, anyway, uh, that's my little rant there. So right now it's at 1,020 uh, watts. And that's on high. And this ceramic heater is pretty efficient. So, um... Let's go on to the next heater. Okay, this is the Soleil brand heater. Uh, they make a bunch of different small heaters. Usually it's a Walmart brand, at least uh, that's where I've bought these at. This is a plastic housing. Uh, I'm not as crazy about plastic, but it's, it's actually worked well um, over the last year or so. Uh, last winter it did. Um, and uh, it's got a fan, so let's turn the fan on. And uh, see, uh, when I ran this with the kilowatt meter, the, the fan ran at about just under 30 watts. So it's just a little bit of a cooling effect if you need that. Um, so let's go up to the low heating setting. When I ran this with the kilowatt meter, it, it hit about 739 watts draw. Looks like we're at 617 with a blue eddy, which is good. To be honest with you, if you want to run this on low uh, with this unit, you would probably get about three, three and a half hours worth of heating. Not as much as you'd like, but uh, that's that's the reality of it. Um, so right now we're on low and it's at 617 watts. I hope my numbers are accurate here. Uh, I'm going by, uh, by watt hours. Um, 600 watt hours. Uh, times three is almost 1800 watts um, hours so that would be about three and then you add a few little bit so we were like three and a half hours with that if I'm wrong tell me in the comments let's put it on high we're popping up to 1175 1175 so just to be uh, honest with you this unit would not run on high uh, with this uh, with the EB240 um, so you could keep it on low all night uh, or as long as you this thing runs, you can keep it on low and it'll run at 617. Um, 1175, this thing is going to give me an error message probably in about two minutes. So, can't do it. Now, if you're getting a new AC200, it will run, but the, the problem there is still the battery. Even if you have an inverter that's high, 2000 watts higher than this, your battery's still going to drain quick. So, hey, Reality, reality check. Okay. Anyways, we're at 1173 on high. So if you want to have one of these heaters, you want to run it on low, and it should run for about three and a half hours. Okay, this is the West Marine space heater. It's got multiple settings on there. It's got a low with low fan, uh, low or medium with with me low fan, and then medium. Uh, with a high fan, high with a high fan. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and crank this one up. Uh, just, just the fan. This is the fan with no heat. Uh, when I ran this with a kilowatt meter, it ran at 24, uh, 24 watts. Uh, so the fan doesn't really draw uh, even 30 watts, so it won't show up there. So let's go ahead and turn it on low heat one. And it's going right to 509 was the highest, 509 watts. 
So if you had this heater on low and you had this thing fully charged, you'd have about four hours worth of of use time on this. Uh, according to my calculations, let's go to the next setting. Actually, that's this. That is uh, low, low, low heat with low fan, medium heat with low fan. So the heat is heat has gone up, but the fan is still on a low setting. That hits 760. Let's go to setting three. That's low with the fan up a little higher. So it's I mean I, I'm sorry it's the medium heat setting with the fan on high, and that's still about 760 watts. 760, yep. So you turn up the fan with the same amount of heat, which is medium, and you give it a little more, uh, a little more dispersal. And let's go to, let's go to setting four on this. This is the high setting. Oop, we went over 1200 watt, so we know that the 1500 watt rating on this is clearly accurate. This is the first one that popped off though right away when it went above a uh, thousand watts. This is the first one, so it was going up pretty high. Um, clearly, so if you wanted to run this unit on one, two, or three, you would still get heat. Let's go ahead and reset that. So, uh, <clears throat> just don't use it on number four, but everything else works on it. Of course, obviously, you're going to run out of battery pretty quick the higher you go. The first setting was the best. That's 500 watts. So uh, I would think four hours on low. Anyways, um, I like the metal casing on this, and this is the only one that's made... Um, somewhere other than China. These are made in Canada. So just FYI, West Marine. They're also priced pretty high. Their prices on West Marine stuff is, is definitely higher than normal. Uh, anyways, that's the West Marine space heater. This is the Lakewood space heater. It also is rated at 1500 watts or 750. In fact, they give you the settings right on the front there. Let's start it out on low before we uh, do that. Um, so, uh, okay. Right now, let's go ahead and, and turn it on. That's 750 watt setting. There's no fan on this. It's basically just a heater. <clears throat> so this is running at 626 watts. It's drawing that much from the Blue Eddy. So you're looking at another three, three and a half hours of run time uh, if you have a full charge battery. Um, <clears throat> And let's run it to the 1500 watt setting. Let's see if we can <laughs> shut off the Blue Eddy here. 1000, 12, 1200, 1200 watts. Error message. So <clears throat> we knew that was going to happen, and that's okay. I'm just, we're just showing you. So let's go back to the regular setting and reset the AC. <clears throat> and it should come on. So you can run this heater on low and get about three hours out of it. Not high, only low. That's the Lakewood Space Heater. I also like these metal casings on these. Well, we know with space heaters they can vary in size. Uh, usually the larger they are, the, the more they draw, the more wattage. I wanted to try a really small space heater that would uh, hopefully maybe draw less. Um, and if you're in a small space, it should do something to keep the edge off at least. This is a very simple heater. It's got a little on and off switch there. If it falls over, it'll uh, it'll cut off, which is good. This has one setting, just on. So let's go ahead and shut that, shut it on, turn it on. Um, clearly, this is it, this is not going to give you the the most heat, but in a small space, it will take the edge off. Like I said, um, this is rated at 250 watts. Right now, it is actually drawing 270 watts. So, uh, not a lot of heat, but uh, you may have a use for it somewhere, even like under, a, under a, a desk or somewhere where you want your feet warm or a small space in the shower maybe. Um, <clears throat> just be safe with it when it's plugged in. Anyways, we're at 251 watts, and that's a small space heater. That would run for about 8 hours uh, on the Blue Eddy uh, if you have a full charge battery. So, 
Um, yeah, uh, at, with 2,000 actual watts on this thing of use, uh, you may get uh, about eight hours of heat on this. So if you're stranded somewhere and the power's out and you need some kind of heat source, even something like this, uh, you get eight hours on this. So this is actually the best value, um, you know, as far as it's not going to keep you toasty warm, but it'll take the edge off. So um, that was a deal. Um, these are hard plastic covers. Um, this is also made in China. Anyways, um, this is a Sole brand, like the bigger one I just showed you earlier, but it's a small version of it. So that's the Sole, small 250 watt space heater. Another option for staying warm when it's cold outside is a heating pad. You may laugh, but many nights this kept my feet warm in a cool room. So. Um, Let's go ahead and turn this one on. Um, it's not reading anything. When I did the uh, test with the kilowatt meter, it, it, it read about 44 watts. Um, right now the unit's on and it's heating up, so it should be drawing something. So what this tells me is it's, it's less drawing less than 30 watts. So clearly this thing would draw the battery down after a, a period of time, but it would take longer than normal because it's less than 30 watt draw. So you get quite a bit of time. You can probably get, you know, uh, a full night's worth of power from this thing. Of course, it's not enough to heat you up completely, but it's enough to take the, the edge off. So that's the Conair heating pad, and uh, it's drawing less than 30 watts. So that's another option for, uh, for those cold nights. Okay, so this is the Sunbeam Quilted Heated Mattress Pad. I don't know if you can see that. Um, this is the ultra soft, so it's softer than extra soft and way softer than the regular soft. So, um, anyway, uh, that's this. It's got a bunch of settings on it uh, from low up to high. Let's go ahead and uh, turn it on. So, right now, I've got it on low, it's turned on, and it went up to uh, about 195 watts draw. That's the low setting 185. When I did the kilowatt test on this, it seemed to cycle on and off. Um, I think when it heats up, it the thermostat shuts it off at some point. Uh, so you'll conserve energy that way. Let's c turn it up to 2. Still 157. I'm assuming these are heat levels. <laughs> it's still going down, see? So let's just go ahead and turn this thing all up to high. and it's still at 139 there it's hovering at 139 the thing is rated uh, on the label at 135 watts so I think we're pretty safe to say that it's gonna it's gonna max out 135 watts tops so I've seen it go from 60 to 120 um, one thing about this is I notice that when it's plugged in it still has a 0.5 watt draw I know it's not a lot but it's enough to slowly drain a battery if you're gonna leave it plugged in Anyways, uh, this is a, a quilted mattress cover. So basically you put this underneath you and the heat rises underneath uh, the bedding. So not a bad way to keep warm if you don't have a heater and it doesn't draw much from the Blue Eddy. So if you're in a space where you just have this and you want to get on top of it, um, this thing would, I would say it'd run safely overnight with a full battery, maybe longer. Um, so that's another good option for heating in, a win in the winter time. So. Okay, so there's kind of like my overview of uh, space heaters. Uh, they go with the Blue Eddy 240. Um, if you've got a 150, you can probably get about half an hour with a use out of any of these. The 240, a little bit longer. Um, the bigger battery bank you've got, the more you can use it. The longer you can use an AC unit or a space heater. Um, you know, one of the main things about these things is safety. Uh, like this one comes with a switch on the bottom that if it tips over it cuts off shuts off the power to the and a lot of them have them built in internally so when they should tip over maybe test your space heater out to see if it does shut off automatically but you know when you use these things keep them away from curtains and cloth and put them on a hard surface and make sure they got plenty of ventilation to pull in air and put it out um, so that's kind of important uh, <clears throat> Clearly the size of the space heater is going to make a difference as far as 
uh, how warm it, how warm it keeps you and how much wattage it draws so you know you're not going to stay toasty toasty warm uh, if you're going to you know use a, something with a low battery you're going to want to use your lowest setting on the heater to keep yourself keep it warm uh, i like the metal casings on some of these but uh, the plastic casings can be okay on the smaller ones uh, just again safety there um, one of the things I've noticed that about space heaters is if, if you're in a pinch and you need it to last longer on low heat, put yourself in a smaller confined space. If you're in the back of an RV, um, put up a, a, a blanket or some kind of curtain to keep yourself isolated from the rest of the RV or boat. Um, that way the heat stays in. Um, when I'm in my boat, I'm down in the cuddy, which is a small area down below the main deck where I steer at. It's like a little a bunk area down there. Um, I can put a curtain up in front of that door and put on a, a small heater and keep it keep it on low. And once that little space is heated, I'm toasty all night. So uh, that that's something to, to keep in mind. Um, you know, also if you're going to run your heater on high, your battery is going to go down quick. So the lowest setting is usually the best if you can just keep the edge off and you know. Uh, stay warm for the night that way you know in the morning and the sun comes out you'll be able to recharge and it'll warm the place up anyway that way um, so running stuff on high you're not going to get a lot of battery even uh, the smallest heater at 250 watts would give me probably eight hours of heat it may not keep the place very warm but it, it'll keep me from freezing to death um, so anyway there's that so in summary, you know, space heaters have been the way to stay warm when you don't have uh, marine air, a marine heating, or an RV. Um, I've got a roof unit on this boat. It doesn't really heat the place up. It takes the edge off. But the small space heaters have been good for, if I place them in certain areas, will keep the room warm. It keeps me at, you know, uh, 65 degrees. Uh, you know, I wear warmer clothes in the winter. But anyways, I'm going to wrap this video up. This is my space heater summary, and I hope you get some use out of the information I've given you here uh, as far as using it with your solar generator. Of course, look at specs and stuff and make sure that your space heater uh, is going to be able to run at a low power and that will not set off your inverter. Um, even with higher inverter solar generators, the battery length isn't going to last that long with a lot of uh, wattage being drawn. So either way... Um, running a space heater on low in a, in a small area is your best bet for staying warm in the wintertime. Hey, it's Smitty here. I'll see you on the lake. Or if you're out boondocking an RV in, be safe. Have a blast. Sit by the bonfire, drink a beer or 12, and I'll see you next time.